Hey everyone, so back in 2015 I made a video about how to set up your own double pass Schlieren system. I mentioned that for that particular system you needed to use a concave spherical mirror. I know many of you who have tried it ended up using a concave parabolic mirror, since you potentially had one from a telescope, and you probably got pretty good results. In this video we'll talk about the differences between the two, and for which Schlieren systems each are ideal for. There are two main mirror-based Schlieren systems. The first is the double pass system, which only uses one mirror, and a concave spherical mirror should be used for best results. The second is the Z-type system, which uses two mirrors, both of which should be concave parabolic mirrors for best results. So let's see why. I've written a little Python script that does a simple simulation for two scenarios for both mirrors. The first scenario is for when the incoming beam is collimated, and the second is for when the incoming beam comes from twice the focal length of the mirror, or 2f. These simulations are quick and easy to code because we know from mirrors that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection relative to the normal vector of the surface, and we can easily compute the normal vector of the mirror surface at any point since the spherical mirror shape is given by the equation of a circle, and the parabolic mirror shape is given by the equation of a parabola. All we need to do is specify a couple known mirror quantities first. For these simulations, I'm going to use the values of my spherical concave mirror, shown in black here, which has a radius of curvature of 60 inches, indicated here with the cyan square. This means the approximate focal length of this mirror is half of this radius of curvature, or 30 inches, indicated here with the magenta square. I'll use this 30 inch focal length for the parabolic mirror as well, which is shown here in dashed red. This way we can compare the two mirrors, each having the same focal length, where one is a spherical mirror and the other is a parabolic mirror. In all my plots, I'm only showing the upper half of the mirror since it's symmetric about the x-axis. First, let's look at how the mirrors perform for the double pass single mirror system. In this system, the light source is placed at two times the focal length of the mirror, which is also the radius of curvature for the spherical mirror. I'm just going to call it the 2f point from now on for both mirrors. In this plot, you can see the two mirror surfaces, and for each mirror, you can see the correspondingly colored incident light rays emanating from the 2f cyan point and terminating at the mirror surface. Note that the rays don't exactly line up for the two mirrors since I've specified that each mirror has the same equally spaced y value points. But if I just keep zooming in on the 2f point, you know, you can see that all the rays are coming from that point. Now in this figure, I'm only plotting the reflected rays that correspond to the incident rays from the other plot. My actual mirror has a 6 inch diameter, or a 3 inch radius, but first I'm showing light rays for a mirror that is much larger. And this is so we can really see the differences between the two. So looking first at the black rays of the spherical mirror, the reflected rays all come back to the 2f position exactly. However, for the red rays of the parabolic mirror, all the reflected rays come back to the x-axis at different points. If we zoom in near the 2f position down by the x-axis here, we can see that again the spherical rays all come back to that position, but the farther away from the center of the mirror we go, the farther away from the point of origin these rays come back to for the parabolic mirror, and this is why the spherical mirror is best for the double pass single mirror Schlieren system. But if I now decrease the mirror diameter down to something more reasonable for most people, say 6 inches, which shows up here as 3 inches due to symmetry, we can see that the reflected rays for both mirrors look almost identical, and I'm just showing three of those rays here, but you can't really tell the difference between the two. It's only if you really zoom in to this 2f point that you can see that the parabolic mirror rays do not come back exactly to the 2f point, but it's so small. This is why those of you who have used a parabolic mirror from your telescope can still get really nice images for the double pass system, even though it's not the optimal mirror for this system. Now let's check out how the mirrors work for a z-type system, which uses two mirrors. In this system, the light from a point source is collimated by the first mirror, then transmitted to the second mirror, which then focuses the light down at the knife edge and into a camera. So what we need to do is calculate how the mirrors focus down collimated light. In this plot, I'm using the same mirrors as before, but now the rays are all collimated, that is, coming in parallel. Because I'm using the same Y points for both mirrors, all the rays are at the same Y position, but the black spherical incident rays obviously terminate at the spherical mirror surface, while the parabolic rays continue to the parabolic mirror surface. Again, I'm first showing a mirror that's way bigger than any you'll use, just to exaggerate the effect. In this plot, we're now looking at the reflected rays. And for the red rays of the parabolic mirror, we can see that all the rays, no matter how far off the optical axis, are focused down to a point at the focal point of the mirror, at x is equal to 30 inches, the magenta square. 
and this is seen more easily by zooming in. You can see they all come down to that exact point. However, for the spherical mirror, the farther away from the center of the mirror we go, the closer to the mirror surface the beams focus. So when you're at near the center of the mirror, they do come pretty close back to the uh, focal point, but the farther away that you get from the center of the mirror, that's these rays out here that are coming down, you can see they focus closer to, or they come back to the x-axis closer to the mirror surface. The parabolic mirror is clearly the best option for both of the mirrors needed in this system, but now we've reduced the mirror diameter again to six inches typical of a more reasonable mirror that you might have. And here again, we see that the rays look very similar for both mirrors. And it's not until you really zoom in at the focal point here that you can see the differences where the red rays of the parabolic mirror all come back to the focal point and the spherical uh, mirror rays are coming back to the x-axis closer and closer to the mirror surface, the farther away from the center of the mirror you go. From both of these simple simulations, we saw that realistically we could use either mirror for both Schlieren systems, but that one mirror was better than the other. Generally, the larger the focal length or the smaller the diameter, the less you have to worry about which mirror you're using. Coincidentally, I have both a 6-inch diameter spherical mirror and a 6-inch diameter parabolic mirror, and what I'm going to do is make a video demonstrating the double-pass single mirror system with both mirrors so that you can see their differences. And what I'll also do is make a video showing you how to set up a Z-type system. And for that system, I'll have to use the parabolic for one of the mirrors and the spherical for the other, but you'll see that you can still get nice results. I hope this video cleared up why you can use either mirror in your Schlieren system and also answered the question of which is best in which situation. Thanks for watching.